Coming up, it's Apple's big tablet, Google's smaller tablet, and drones, drones, drones. You should have watched before you buy. Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for Before You Buy is brought to you by Cashfly at C A C H E F L Y dot com. This episode of Before You Buy is brought to you by Audible.com. To download a free audiobook of your choice, go to audiblepodcast.com slash before you buy. And by the Ring Video Doorbell. With Ring, you can see and talk to anyone at your door from anywhere in the world using your smartphone. It's like caller ID for your house. Right now, get free expedited FedEx shipping in time for the holidays when you go to ring.com slash before you buy. And welcome to Before You Buy, it's Twitch product review show, where you take the latest and greatest gadgets and gizmos, and we give it to the people who can give you the most honest review possible. I'm Father Robert Ballas here, the digital Jesuit, and you see before me some of the things that you'll be seeing at the end of the show. It's sort of a drone extravaganza. We know there's a lot of people out there who are going to be wanting to get one of these or give one of these to that special someone in your life, that geek who just needs a little bit of flight. But we decided to start the show off with something that may change the way you work. We asked our very own Megan Maroney to give us an honest review of the iPad Pro. I am Megan Maroney and I'm going to review the iPad Pro and the pencil a little bit. I might be coming a little late to this party, but I like to spend a little time with a device before I give it an official review. If you didn't catch my review of the Logitech Create keyboard on Before You Buy, episode 202, take a look at that because I think a good keyboard case is essential for the iPad Pro. And if you aren't a fan of the Logitech Create, you might want to try the new smart keyboard case from Apple. And if you want to be able to adjust the angle of your iPad Pro, you might want to wait a month for the reviews of the Bridge Pro keyboard, which you can pre-order starting January 4th. Now you can't talk about the iPad Pro without talking about the pencil. It is a very fun tool, but unless you're an artist, the $99 price tag is a tad steep. I will tell you that it works exactly as advertised and does not disappoint. It's also shockingly easy to, to lose, uh, so be careful. It's also a little weird to charge the pencil, and the pencil only works with the iPad Pro. Now, I've been using the iPad Pro since the week it came out in mid-November. My first thoughts were that it was as big and beautiful as I wanted it to be. It was as enjoyable to use to watch movies as it was to write scripts for podcasts. The bigger screen was better for email, more fun for games for my kids and I to play, and it was still small and light enough to stick in my giant purse and take wherever I plan to go. I still think that with just a few notable exceptions. First, let's get to the iPad Pro basics. There's a 12.9 inch screen, Inside is the A9X, a 64-bit chip that Apple calls desktop class, and is supposed to deliver nearly twice the CPU performance and the graphics performance of the iPad Air 2. Now, I haven't been disappointed with performance at all. Uh, the iPad Pro weighs 1.57 pounds, it's 6.9 millimeters thick, and it has more pixels than the MacBook Pro. I have no complaints about the design. It seems a little big at first, but you quickly get used to the size. In terms of display, I also have no complaints, but I'm not an expert, and to be completely honest, I have a hard time taking issue with the fact that a red looks a little more magenta than it should. But you will find no shortage of people online who compare iPad displays down to the minutest details, so check those out if you care. Now, if you're going to get this to watch movies and you already have an iPad Air 2, I don't think you need to upgrade. But if you want to watch and listen to media and work on the same portable device, definitely consider the iPad Pro. There is no 3D touch in the iPad Pro, but I miss that a lot less than I thought I would. I don't even really use it that much in my iPhone 6S, to be honest. The battery is great. It lasts longer than I'm ever going to be away from a charger, even when I'm connected to the Bluetooth keyboard. Now, I didn't benchmark for performance, but if you're interested in that sort of thing, check out Geekbench. They do a pretty good job of showing how the iPad Pro measures up. My only disappointment is multitasking. Yes, you can use slide over to see another app without leaving the one you're using by swiping to the right from the edge of the screen, but you can't see any app. The app has to support this feature. And split view lets you use two apps at the same time, but it also doesn't work with all apps. Here's the thing. 
As much as I love iOS, I am not a die-hard OS X user. It's what I use now, but before 2015, I used a Windows machine for the last decade. And for email, social media, and actual media, I am much more likely to grab my iPhone or my iPad than I am a laptop. So I am thrilled to have one machine that does everything. Here are the pros, the sides, the display, and the speakers. They sound great. The smart connector that lets you easily turn a consumption device into a creation device, I really like that. Here are the cons, the price. It starts at $799 and goes up to $1,079 for the 128 gigabyte with Wi-Fi and cellular. And you also have to buy the keyboard and maybe even a pencil depending on what you're going to use this for. The apps. I wish there were more apps that supported the multitasking tools, and I wish there were more apps that supported the display of the iPad Pro. Some of them just don't work on the iPad Pro yet. All the really great productivity apps are going to cost you extra, and I'm not talking about 99 cents either. These apps usually run around $15. Some have experienced crashes with the iPad Pro. Apple has offered a fix. Is this going to replace your laptop right this minute? No. Here's where Leo and I differ on opinions on the iPad Pro. He says, before you buy an iPad Pro, think very deeply about what you will use it for. I totally agree if you already have a laptop that you love. I think it also makes sense to come at this from the other direction. If you are considering getting a laptop, think very deeply about whether you need that much power. Maybe you're fine and would actually be happier with an iPad Pro instead. Now, if you're an artist and if you travel for work a lot and if your work doesn't involve a program that you can't run on the iPad Pro, I definitely give the iPad Pro a buy. Back to you, Padre. You know, this has been one of the most controversial products that we've had on Before You Buy this year because you're either really, really hot on it or you don't see the point. And I think Megan and Leo really play off each other well. Megan, she lives in the iOS world. She loves the iOS world. She sees the value of doing things in iOS. So she doesn't care if it replaces your laptop. Whereas Leo is looking at it and saying, well, it's the same size as my laptop. It's almost the same weight once you add all the accoutrements that I'm gonna need. So why would I carry this instead of a laptop? Think very carefully if this is the kind of device for you. But if it is, then Megan Maroney gives the iPad Pro a buy. You can find Megan Maroney here on the Twit TV network. In the new year, she and Jason Howell will be doing tech news today at 4 p.m. Pacific time every day. Plus, you can still find her on iOS Today with Leo Laporte. Let's go ahead and expand a little bit on the iPad Pro because one of the big pros for this device, for a device of that size, is for people who are artists, who are looking to draw. Well, thankfully, we've got an in-studio resource in our very own Greg Burnett. It's actually Greg Burnett, but we call him Greg. Now, <laughs> This is a device that you have been, um, I'm going to say, it, you've been lusting over it. You've been hoping that Leo forgets it one day <laughs> so you could take it home. Uh, yeah, pretty much. Uh, it, 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 it's a, it's a, a digital artist's like, dream it is. machine. It really is. <laughs> it's, it's a Wacom, it's a beautiful screen, and it's a light device all in one. But you, you were one of the first people in the studio who said, this will be perfect once we get the pencil. Because <laughs> we, got, we got the iPad Pros way before we got the pencils, and then we got the pencils, and you said, Yes. Yeah. Now, yeah, can you show us some of the work that you've created? Uh, sure. Yeah. I got this camera right over here. Uh, so this is actually this uh, some of the work I was doing when we first got the iPad Pro before I really. Well, got what app is this, by the way? Uh, this is just the uh, paper. Oh, app. the one that comes with it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, so this is with my finger. This is what I was doing with my finger before wow. uh, before I, we got the pencil. So I was really excited to get a hold of the pencil. Uh, so Megan finally uh, let me uh, play with her iPad. Uh, once we got the pencil, and uh, <laughs> so this is like some of the first drawings I did. I very was just very anime inspired. I like that. <laughs> yeah, uh, and as you can see, um, sorry, uh, as it, I I played with it more, I got more like comfortable with it, and um, <laughs> I like and it. really started to. Oh, okay, uh, now I am an untrained eye, but I will say the work that you did with your finger was fantastic. Are, as an artist, do you say that it's much easier with the pencil? Like the pencil is actually worth it. Uh, yeah, uh, definitely. Uh, uh, I'd say that the pencil is the reason to get the iPad Pro. Oh, so you you would not suggest the iPad Pro unless you were also going to buy a pencil. Unless unless you were solely planning on like just doing work with it, Got not it. Uh, like not art, I guess. Uh, uh, if you were planning on doing art with the iPad Pro, you you need you need the pencil uh, because the, show it how it the works. Pressure, yeah. the Take pressure. us through it. Pressure sensitive, like oh, and that's, ooh, that's uh, really nice. so uh, if I switch to the pencil like tool. Um, you can shade like with the side of the pencil, 
and then also you know thin lines as well. So it detects angle. So if it it's, mm -hmm. if it's at an angle, angle, it turns into a shader tool. Angle and pressure. Um, so it, it it really allows you to. Uh, some of the sketches I did like looked almost as if I they, it was pencil on paper, um, and I mean, and wow. just being able to, you know, the more pressure I put, the bigger the the uh, ink I guess gets, and it makes it really easy to just kind of um, bust out some doodles like, like that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you keep doodling. I'm gonna I'm gonna extol the virtues of the pencil. So we know that the pencil is is ninety nine dollars. It's been very difficult to find one of these. They're finally back in supply. So if you bought yourself an iPad Pro, uh, uh, well, obviously this is gonna be a buy from Greg. He thinks that this is a great device. Find yourself one of these. He's drawing cat bug right now, which I love. Thank you. If any of you bravest warriors fans out there. Uh, you know, here's the thing for me though, I have no artistic talent, I would not know what to do with it. Obviously, it's a tool for people who know how to draw, who are actually creative. I will say that the pencil is one of these devices that is not repairable. iFixit did a teardown, it is basically, don't even try to fix it, just you know, make sure you get Apple Care on it, bring it back to the store and, and replace it if something goes wrong. But we've seen results like this, and, and this is absolutely gorgeous, and I think, I think you're right, Greg. I think this brings out the real purpose of having such a large iPad and such a powerful iPad. It is for the creative folk who want to use this as their drawing device. Oh, any last words of wisdom for the people out there who are thinking about getting a pencil for their iPad Pro? Um, words of wisdom? Uh, I, don't, I don't really have any words of wisdom, but uh, all I can say is that uh, it's probably one of my favorite products, like, or favorite stylus by far to date. Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, one, one thing, though, I will notice, and I saw this in Megan's review. Uh, can you show us how you charge the pencil? Oh, God. Okay. Uh, yeah, this is, this is one, my one gripe with it. Uh, this is ridiculous. So you, you <laughs> stick lower. it in oh, there we go. the lightning port. So, so, so it, just, it just sticks <laughs> out like this. Uh, and yeah. Can totally I, can, this I don't, I don't understand. For, for a pretty elegant product, to have to have it sticking out like that, where you are just inviting you to break both the pencil and the, the, the lightning port on the iPad, that seems like a, that's, that's as bad as the new Apple mouse that has a charging port underneath the mouse, so you can't use it while you're charging. Yeah, no, I mean, this, this Apple's like known for good design, and this that's is just not, terrible, terrible design choice right here. Okay. Uh, yeah, so that's, that's definitely my one gripe for this. Well, do me a favor, can you, uh, you can export all your drawings from there, right? Mm -hmm. uh, can you promise to, to export all your drawings and put them onto your Twitter account? Sure, Let's of course. do that. Uh, this is Greg Burnett again. Greg, uh, formerly known as Greg here on the Twit TV network. Uh, he is in the background all the time. You'll see him, he is a, a great artist. We'll use him for resources on, on, uh, on know-how. You've seen him here on Before You Buy. Could you tell the folks at home where they can find you if they want to find your work? <clears throat> uh, yeah, I'm uh, on Twitter at uh, Grog, G-R-A-G-G, -G, Burnett. Um, and also, if you want to check out any of my drawings, I have a website, gregburr.net. <laughs> Greg, thank you so very much for sharing that and for sharing your art with us. Again, that's the pencil for the iPad Pro. Uh, if you are an artist and if you want to take your art to the next level, from him, it's a definite buy. Now, when we come back, we're going to be taking a step out of the studio. We're going to take you back to San Francisco with Brian Burnett, who is clearly now the more inferior of the Burnetts. He's got a product for you people who like, uh, well, a bit fizzier fizz in your beer. But before we do that, let's thank the first sponsor of this episode of Before You Buy, and it's Audible. Now, you know what Audible is. Audible is the premium vendor of audiobooks on the internet. If you're looking for high quality recordings with people who actually know what they're doing, of the stories that you love the most, you've got to try Audible. Now, Audible is the leading provider of audiobooks with more than 180,000. Now, that's not a typo. That's 180,000 downloadable titles across all types of literature, including fiction, nonfiction, and periodicals. Now, for listeners of Before You Buy, Audible is offering a free audiobook to give you a chance to try out their service. And once you try it, you will be hooked. One audiobook you may consider downloading is The Martian. This, this, is, one of my, this is actually my, my favorite book of the year. I, I bought it in print, I bought it in an ebook, and I bought it on Audible. The Martian is the story of, well, you know what it's the story of, because a movie was just released with Matt Damon. 
it's, it's even better in the audio book. You get all the details that had to be left out of the movie because the movie just couldn't be 10 hours long. And it is such an engaging story. I've listened to that story, that audiobook, at least 20 times. And I know this because my Audible app just told me that I had listened to it 20 times. So something else, I, I don't normally give two titles, but another title that I really, really like, please consider it Ready Player One. I know that book came out quite a while ago, but the audiobook version is read by Will Whedon. It's really, really good. Again, one of my favorite books of, of recent years. I, I would put The Martian and Ready Player One on the same shelf. I know you will too. Now, to, to download these audiobooks for free or another one of your choice, go to audiblepodcast.com slash before you buy. That's audiblepodcast.com slash before you buy. Now, those two book credits, that's a, you know, a very, very small percentage of the books that they offer will require more than that. But those two that I just recommended to you, you can get for free right now. If you're not already an Audible subscriber, why not try it out? Why not see if this is the new way for you to read your books? This offer is only good in the United States and Canada, and uh, this applies to all of Audible's offers through Twit TV. And we thank Audible for their support. Oh, before you buy. Well, folks, let me ask you a question. Do you like fizzy drinks? Well, of course you do. Who doesn't like fizzy drinks? Now, some of you may also like alcoholic fizzy drinks. And if that's you, then you're going to want to take a trip with Brian Burnett to the Pepcon Holiday Spectacular in San Francisco, where he got to take a look at some very interesting physics. Brian Burnett here at Pepcon from Host of Know How, and I'm interviewing Philip, and we're taking a look at physics of beer. Philip, could you tell me what you've got here? Sure. So we all know beer fresh from the tap tastes great. But unfortunately for us beer levels, it just doesn't taste the same in the cans and bottles. So we developed a system that would take any can or bottle, even a growler up to 64 ounces, and it would enhance the flavor and taste to give it that fresh from the tap experience. Now, you can use this with any beer. Like you've got an example of a, an anchor steam here, and you put it inside and you're using the physics of sound to actually change the, uh, the, the amount of foam that's on t in the glass? Yeah, so it's, it's a two-step process. So when you put any size can, any size bottle up to a 64 ounce growler, it works with all carbonated beers. When you pull the handle forward to tap, we pour the beer under pressure. And we do so to maintain as much carbonation in the body of the beer. So it would enhance the flavor profile. Then when you push the handle in the backwards position, we say the top, we utilize sound waves and we perfect the density, stability, and texture of the foam. So it almost looks has the consistency of like a nitro foam, but we're not using any nitrogen. So you're not going to alter the flavor profile. So it's going to give you a lot more aroma, but it's going to give you this really great, smooth, rich, and creaminess to the beer. And any of the astringency or, or bitterness, it's going to level them off and smooth them off and allow you to taste all the other flavors within the beer. That is so cool. I'm already a big fan of physics in general, but I think I'd be doing a disservice if I didn't at least try this. Mm. Wait, one more. Yeah. Yes, there's definitely a difference. I enjoy it. If people wanted to find out more, where should they go? How much might this cost and where can they find it? Sure, so uh, we're, our launch partner is Brookstone. So you can find us at over 300 Brookstone locations. You go to UpgradeYourBeer.com, and it'll direct you to our site, or Physics. It's F-I-Z-Z-I-C-S. Very nice. Thank you, Philip. If you're a, a beer aficionado and you're looking for your next accessory, this just might be it. Thanks to Brian Burnett for giving us the best from, uh, from Pepcon. Um, I will say... That camera work was spectacular, much better than most of the segments we had from Pepcon. I wonder, uh, wonder who did it. Hmm. Yeah, well. yeah, yeah, maybe me. Okay, folks, we're going to change up a little bit. We don't normally do these kinds of products on Before You Buy because we have a policy. The policy is that the product must be available for purchase before we bring it onto the show. But we had a special guest and we had a special product, so we decided to break the rules and give you Brian Chi and the Scanadu Scout. Brian... Uh, take a step back so you can be in the shot and take a step over here. There you go. See? There, ah, all right. Uh, this is the Scanadu Scout. I, I, I will say, I saw this at CES, was, maybe not last year, maybe even two years ago. And 
I kind of thought it was voodoo. They were saying this is the tricorder. This can give you all of your vital stats without having to do any invasive procedures and without having to put on a blood, uh, a blood pressure uh, cuff or, mm -hmm. or anything else. You've had this for a while. How did you get it? I signed up for, on the Kickstarter very, very early. I think I was in the first couple hundred people to sign up. And so, shall we say, I've had a few health problems over the years, and I wanted to be more aggressive about monitoring my, you know, my, my health. And so I signed up and waited and waited and waited. It took a while. And finally got it. And finally got it. Oh, what exactly does this thing do? So it is basically a puck that shines light through your skin to measure blood pressure, pulse, temperature, and oxygen saturation. You know, I, I call it Chebert's tricorder. All right, so show us how this actually works. Okay, so app is available for Android or iOS. I'm going to tap on that. Go to the overhead. There you go. And go like that. So now I power on the device. It's going to go through Bluetooth to find my scanner do scout. I have to put my finger on the metal device, and then it wants me to put it against my forehead, <laughs> <Could you understand? laughs> which looks kind of silly. Okay, it looks a little silly, but okay, okay. But as you go oh, to the thing, you're going to see my ECG, right. and that's my heartbeat. It's taking ECG, so ECG, heartbeat, blood pressure, blood ox. Yeah. What else? Is, 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 are those the main ones? Yeah. It's a little hard. It gets better as it's consistent. It's hard because I'm standing up. I, I've noticed the progress bar keeps going up and down. Yeah, normally it says amazing. Amazing. <laughs> Very good. Okay, we're getting yeah, there. Yeah, okay. because I'm, I'm not pushing quite so hard. Push harder. Push it into your head. Push. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I have to say, <laughs> I don't remember them doing this on Star Trek. <laughs> with the tricorder. So this is slightly different than what I've come to expect from the future. <laughs> okay, so okay, the progress is, is stalling, so maybe making you laugh is, yeah. is killing the scan. I, 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 think, I think I broke the scan. Okay. I'm laughing too hard. So stop laughing. <laughs> uh, uh, huh. So th this is not yet available because they, they actually do need the FDA approval, correct? Yeah, I'm actually part of the study group with Scripps Health. And someday this will finish. Normally, normally when I do this a couple times a day, I'm not laughing from Padre jokes. And I do it when I wake up. I do it before I go to bed. And oh, yeah, yeah, see, it took too long. It's yeah, okay. your scan is horrible. But what you can do is you can see my trends. So there's my blood pressure trend. That was for today. But let's go look at the week or the month or the year. Year, year, thank you. Or my heart rate. Again, I can look at it over a long, longer period of time. Oxygen saturation is another big one. You know, how well, you know, I snore, and when you have very low oxygen saturation, that might be an indicator of sleep apnea. Right, right. But anyway, so what's really good is I'm keeping track of my health. My doctor's really happy I'm being so aggressive about it. And we're having better success at tweaking the blood pressure medicines to try and get my blood pressure down. Of course, staying with you over this week, my blood pressure is kind of going... It, bing, yeah, bing, it goes bing, up. Bing. It bounces a little bit. Uh, okay, I have to ask, because there are bands out there that, that are already purchasable that will give me most of these metrics, and they will give me a progress scale so that I can see what it looks like over time. Why would I want to spend on a dedicated device like the scan do that requires me to do this every once in a while? Well, first and foremost, it is way more accurate. Okay. In fact, every time I go to the doctor's office, I will compare, I will do a scan right after the doctor's nurse scans me, and we will compare those numbers, and they're almost point for point identical. I wear a Microsoft band, and the um, pulse rate is wildly off. Okay. So that's the difference. This is a medical grade. Which is why they need FDA approval. Right. Okay. And Scripps Health is the people running the trial. Okay. Well, Chebert, I know they can't buy this yet, but if they want to find out more information to maybe get on a list for when they can buy it, where can they go and what do you think the price point is going to be? Well, the price point is probably going to be in about the $200, $250 okay. range, depending on how, how much grief the FDA gives them. Um, you can look it up at Scanadu. Um, 
Oh, I sorry, it wasn't Kickstarter. It was Indiegogo. I I I spend way too much money on both. Right. But for those people that have uh, a history of family history of heart condition, definitely a buy. Just as soon as Scanadu is allowed to sell them. There you have it, the rule-breaking review here on Before You Buy. We don't normally offer you products that you can't buy, but uh, when you can buy this one, Brian Chi says go ahead and pick one up for about $200. Brian Chi, he is a co-host with me on This Week in Enterprise Tech every Friday at 1.30 p.m. Pacific time. He's also the director of the Advanced Networking Computer Laboratory in Honolulu, Hawaii. Brian, if they want to find out more about you and your work, where can they go? Well, you can always go to the school's website at www.soest.hawaii.edu. My uh, Twitter address is at A-D-V-N-E-T-L-A-B. Brian Chi, thank you very much. Now, if you could take this, go back over there, stick it on your forehead, and tricord yourself. Thank you very much, Padre. Uh, folks, when we come back, we showed you the Apple iPad Pro. We're going to show you something a little bit smaller, something from Leo Laporte, maybe something in a Google product. But before we do that, let's thank the second sponsor of this episode of Before You Buy, and it's the Ring Video Doorbell. Now, this, folks, is what the Ring Video Doorbell looks like. It's, it is a doorbell. This replaces the little button that you've got at the front of your home that lets you know when someone comes to the door. Now, that in itself is not that all exciting. You press the button, and you get a tone. Okay, but what happens after you get that tone is remarkable. Now, here's, I'm going to give you a disclaimer. I actually bought one of these before I ever had Ring as a sponsor on the This Week in Tech Network. And I got to tell you, it's one of my favorite products of all time. Go ahead and go to my, my overhead, Victor, and I'll show you what's in the kit. Inside the kit, you're going to find all the tools you need to get this installed, from the drill bits to the level. And then you find the Ring Video Doorbell. Oh, it's got a little plate here that will take the voltage you get from your house that goes out to your doorbell and turn it into voltage that charges the unit. Uh, if you do that, you never have to worry about it charging. But if you don't have that, if it's a new installation or if you've got it in a place where you don't have wiring, you just use this. It's a little micro USB cable, standard cable. I mean, they actually give you one that will allow you to charge an internal lithium ion battery and keep the ring powered up for a year. Now, what does it do with that power? That's the magic. This has a high definition camera, as well as a motion sensor and a microphone and speaker. It actually allows you to have a two-way conversation with anyone who comes to your door. Oh, here's, here's the thing. I have this installed for my parents. I'm always a little worried about them. They live in Las Vegas and, well, I, I, I don't want people scouting out the house to see if they're home or not because that's just, just that's a bad thing. So I installed this at their door and I, I get a full record of when any anytime anyone comes to the door or any time that the motion sensor gets set off. This is actually feed from the view outside of my parents' door. Now, here's, here's the cool thing. Already this season, we've caught our neighbor stealing power from us during the summer because my parents weren't home and he was powering our, his air conditioner off our front yard outlet. We also f spotted someone stealing a UPS package from the house across the way. This is not just a cool gadget. This is not just a way to give caller ID for your home. This is a way for you to get peace of mind. Folks, why not try the product that Time Magazine called one of the best gadgets in the world? Why not see if maybe this is the thing you need to complete your home security system? Why not get yourself a peace of mind for you and your loved ones with the Ring Video Doorbell? Now, right now, you can go to ring.com slash before you buy for free expedited FedEx shipping. That's ring.com slash before you buy. Ring.com slash before you buy. With Ring, you're always home. And we thank the Ring Video Doorbell for its support of Before You Buy. Let's go ahead and take a gander over to Leo Laporte, who's got his own take on a different kind of tablet. This one not from Apple, but from Google. Hi, Father Robert. A new toy has entered my domain, and one we were very excited about when Google announced it at the Nexus event a few months ago. This is the Pixis, Pixel C tablet, and we were puzzled about it because of the name. Normally, tablets from Google are Nexus. The Pixels are Chromebooks. An Android tablet called a Pixel? Well, Google explains it saying, well, the Pixels are the ones we design and build. The Nexuses are built by partners. But I don't know if that's fully the right answer. Ron Amadio at Ars Technica has some evidence that the Pixel C was originally intended to be a Chromebook. Uh, but the project to touchify Chrome OS was canceled. And so they had to, uh, they had to put 
Android on a tablet. It's a it's a nice tablet with a very fast processor. This is in fact the first Tegra X1 tablet and a, a unique keyboard attachment system. Now they have two keyboards. This is the portfolio keyboard, which is more of a case, as you can see, that has a keyboard attached and acts as a stand. But I have to say I'd recommend just what Google just calls generically the keyboard. It's not a full case, but watch this. When you break the magnetic attraction, it's a very strong magnet. And then you see that? Look how strong that is. It, it won't even fall off. You have a infinite angle, unless you pull it too far forward and pry it off, that can go all the way back and all the way forward. And you get a really, I think, a really nice uh, platform for your Nexus C. It, in fact, becomes in some ways uh, like a laptop computer. And I say like because of a couple of things. Uh, obviously, number one is it's Android. And Android was really never intended to be used as a laptop computer. And this in particular, this is as a Google device running the latest Android, Marshmallow. But Marshmallow has no facility for split screens. You can only do one thing at a time. It is touch focused, but it's very much in some cases uh, with certain apps, totally an iPhone uh, operating system. For instance, open Instagram <laughs> and immediately you're put back into phone mode into, into a portrait mode. Uh, it's just not a very good experience on tablet. Having said that, there are a lot of apps that work very well in tablet mode, in landscape mode, including Google's Google Plus app, which goes immediately into a kind of a beautiful big screen mode, but then three columns, and I think uses the real estate quite well. Um, there are a variety of third-party apps. I like this Aquamail app. We've talked about this before as one of the most powerful Android apps for email, and it actually has a basically a desktop email experience for you on the Pixel C. The other thing that makes this kind of uh, not quite a, a laptop is, unfortunately, the keyboard. It's a good keyboard with lots of travel on the keys, very similar to, uh, you know, modern laptops. But because of the size of the Pixel C, the keyboard is kind of tiny. There are arrow keys, but there's no function keys. And you have to remember a broad range of, of keyboard shortcuts to use uh, some of the tablet features. Alt-Tab, for instance, brings up the Recents screen and lets you scroll through it. Uh, if you hit the Search key, that's in the place of the uh, 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 Caps Lock key. If you hit the Search key and enter, it'll bring you back to the home page, things like that. You, you might say this looks a little gaudy. I've actually replaced the standard Google Now launcher with my favorite launcher, Nova Launcher. And it's one of the reasons I kind of like Android tablets as opposed to iPads. The use of widgets means these become a dashboard. I could very quickly get a lot of information. Here's my calendar. Here's my text messages. Here's how many calories I've eaten today, and I could quickly add food. If I hear a song playing, I could just press that button, and it automatically starts listening to the song. These are things that I think make Android a little bit better than iOS for a touch interface, and I think the Pixel C takes good advantage of these. So all in all, I'm fairly happy with the Pixel C. I think it's a, a great kind of hybrid tablet experience. I do wish it had split screens. The Pixel C team says it will in the next version of Android, uh, Android N. Uh, but I can wait until then. I use this all the time in, in places where I don't want to carry around a heavy laptop. I want something thin and light and lightweight. And I still want to do some a little bit more serious work. You know, I can go into the chat room using IRC Cloud and really have a desktop-style chat experience. I, and, and type away to my heart's content. So I kind of like it. So let's talk a little bit about the pros and cons. You know, on the pro side, this is great hardware. And everybody agrees on that. Designed by the Pixel team, it has a kind of a look and feel of the of the Google Pixel Chromebook, including the rainbow uh, little lights here that will tell you how full the battery charge is. I really think this keyboard attachment with the powerful magnets is actually quite innovative. And, and I really like it. They've also learned from Microsoft's experience with the Surface that you want more than one angle. You want to have a variable angles, uh, and and especially for an airplane, this would be a really great choice if you're sitting in like a coach seat. Um, Apple still hasn't learned that, and uh, and I think that the iPad Pro suffers a little because it only can have one angle. Uh, the keyboard has nice feel to it, but it's a con also. It's a pro for the nice feel, but a con for the cramped feeling. If you have big hands or you're used to a full-size keyboard, this might be a little tough for you to type accurately on. Another big con, of course, is the price. It starts just the tablet itself 
at 500 bucks, but you're going to want to get the 64 gig version at 100 bucks for that, and then add another 170 bucks for the keyboard. You're you're talking laptop uh, costs here, and that is an awful lot for a convertible tablet. Uh, other cons include, you know, a, a dearth of Android tablet apps. Although I found enough that I feel fairly comfortable, and a lack of split screen means it's not exactly an ideal productivity tool, but. Given the pros, given the cons, if you're willing to spend the money for quality hardware, fast hardware, by the way, the, the uh, X1 processor really is speedy, uh, that uh, kind of feels a really kind of nice look and feel. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say it's a buy. I've been very happy with the Pixel. I've seen many negative reviews of it. Uh, but I, I think this is uh, this is something I, I use a lot and I'm very happy to have. My recommendation, get the standard keyboard, not the portfolio keyboard, unless you have to have a case that covers the tablet, the whole tablet. So a buy, hey, that's how I feel. I got to tell it like I see it for the Pixel C. Back to you, Padre. Elegant, stylish, and functional. It's a buy for the Pixel C from our very own Leo Laporte. Now, I, I'm not going to tell you where to find Leo Laporte on the Twit TV network because you can find Leo Laporte everywhere on the Twit TV network. That's kind of what he does. And uh, we thank him very much for his review for Before You Buy. Now let's get to our drone extravaganza. Uh, we've covered some of the bigger ones, and if you want to build one, you go to one of the other Twitch shows, Know How. We'll show you how to put one together that can carry a GoPro or a RED camera or whatever you may want. But we wanted to show some lower-priced options for those people who just want to get into the air. So I brought on Tony Wang and our very own Carly Perkins, who's going to show us these two. Now, these are Parrot devices. We've been playing with Parrot for a while. Carly, I'm going to ask you to take off first. You've got the cargo drone. Now, the wonderful thing about this is Carly, there's actually a button on Carly's phone. It's connected via Bluetooth to her iPhone that says take off. And when you hit that button, it handles all the logistics, all the little things that has to do to make sure that you can, you can get off the ground. The, now, you may notice that there's the doctor there's the 11th standing on top, or the 12th, depending on how you count, standing on top of that. That's because this is the cargo drone. This is called the Parrot Airborne Cargo Mini Drone. It's a quadcopter that has a little Lego attachment. So for those people who want to play around, uh, yeah, you can do that. Oh, she's got great control. Even though she's still learning how to fly, because it runs off of her phone and because it's got an app that, that does most of the thinking for her, she can concentrate on what does she want it to do. Does she want it to spin around? She could actually make it flip, but she shouldn't do that right now because she'll lose a Lego figure off, off the top. Oh, it's 62 grams, which means there is no FAA registration that's required. Even when that goes live on Monday, on the 21st of December, you won't have to register this to fly it. It, it does connect via Bluetooth uh, versus, say, the Sumo Mini Drone, which connects via Wi-Fi. And uh, it's got a 550 milliamp hour battery that they say can last about nine minutes. It charges in about 25. It doesn't come with an external charger, but you can get one, and you can also buy extra batteries for, uh, de depending on who you buy them from, from, uh, from about $7 all the way up to $20 each. Now, I think she just landed. Did you, did you do that on purpose, or did it run out of power? See, that's one of the other things I like about this. If you panic, you just hit land, and it will take it down safely. It won't drop out of the air. Uh, Carly, uh, do you like this? I mean, is it, this is actually fun. It's really fun, actually, yeah. I mean, it's pretty easy to use, um, you know, right on your iPhone. You can just operate it, spin it around. And I, I will say this. They all Parrot devices work fantastic on iPhone. Some Android devices, not so much. Uh, they all use the same app, by the way. It's the, uh, it's the uh, Parrot FreeFly. Uh, flight application that you need from all the way from their biggest drones all the way to their their ground drones that's the one that you use uh, now this is gonna sell for about a hundred and nine dollars up to hundred and twenty dollars if you get the night flying version it's got a bunch of stickers so you can customize it if you're you know if, if that's what you're into you can also remove those guards once you get a little bit better if you take the guards off it will reduce the weight which will increase the speed it will also increase its cargo carrying capacity and it will also increase the amount of time that you can fly it. So that's the Parrot Airborne Cargo Mini Drone. Let's take a look at something that's a little bit different. This is the Parrot Hydrofoil Mini Drone. It's called the ORAC. Now, it's actually based on the same platform as that, uh, that Parrot Cargo Mini Drone that Carly was flying, but this is designed to be hooked into that boat. Go show the boat. There's that little platform at the top that this connects into, and when it is connected into that, it allows you to use your drone 
as the propulsion and the steering unit of this of this hydrofoil. Uh, the, you have to put it in the front first. There you go. There, there. Uh, unfortunately, we weren't able to flood the Twit TV studios, so we can't show you what it looks like. On the app, there is actually there's a mode selection, so you could tell it: Am I flying this as a drone, or am I flying it as a propulsion unit? Actually, go ahead and start it up, and see see if we can crash it really quickly. So, yeah. There you go. Go ahead. Just take it right off the desk. Let's do it. Hey, just keep going. Keep going, Tony. Come on. Oh, it's oh, because it, yeah, yeah. It knows it's it knows it's just gonna. So go ahead and take it off from there, and let's show them how this actually flies. It works much the same way as Carly's drone. This thing is going to use the same battery. It's 550 milliamp hours. The drone itself is 52 grams. So again, no FAA registration. It's the same automated automated takeoff. You hit the takeoff button, it will head up, and it will actually stay there. It will hover until you give it commands. It uses Bluetooth. Well, and actually, I think Tony's using it on an Android phone, so he has one of the Androids that will work well with the Parrot application. Now, of course, this can work as a drone or a hydrofoil, uh, but the disadvantage to that is if you're nowhere near a body of water, you're probably not going to be using it as a hydrofoil all that much. I will say, though, the boat mode was a lot of fun. I put it in a pool, and this gets some speed. I mean, when, when you actually get that boat up on its foils, uh, people, people do notice. Oh, this is considerably more expensive than the cargo drone. This is going to go for $199.95, so it's about $90 more. I'm a little put off by that because I would probably spend most of my time just flying the drone, not using the boat segment of, uh, of, the, uh, of the hydrofoil. Now, let's go and look at the pros and cons of this. I, I like the fact that they're very easy to use. These are both incredibly easy to fly. I like the fact that they've got a, a mini six, uh, VGA camera on, underneath the drone, so you can take some quick pictures. It's not great, but it's, it's actually much better than you think it might. Uh, I also like the fact that they're durable. You can crash these things over and over again, and they're not going to break. On the con side, both of them are a bit pricey. I, I'm actually okay with the price of the cargo, cargo drone at $109, $110. That's just fine. But $200 seems a bit steep to add an attachment that you're probably not going to use all that much. So between these two, I would say the cargo drone gets definitely a buy, and the hydrofoil, unfortunately, is going to get a don't buy. But again, if, if you live in a place surrounded by water, maybe that's what you want. Thank you very much to Tony Wang and to Carly Perkins for being our expert pilots, uh, iOS and Android. And uh, yeah, that, that's what we got. All right. so. That's in the $100 range. Let's bring it down a tiny bit. I want to show you this. This is an update of a drone, the, actually the very first drone that we showed off on Before You Buy. Uh, this is the Squan Extreme Quad 4 720p video drone. Now, you may notice it looks a lot like the other one. It's the same configuration. It's got an extra hump. This is actually a much higher strength shell. Uh, this is one of the things that people don't understand about the, uh, the extreme versions. There are others, like the SEMA, that look almost exactly the same and sell for $30 less, but the materials used on this are much greater. We've crashed both of them a lot, and the extremes always seem to handle the crash just a little bit better. Now, let me show you what this actually does. So it's got a beefed up set of motors. It uses that same 2.4 gigahertz control. Uh, it's got a detachable camera. This time, they understand that people are going to want to detach the camera. Also, detachable landing gears, detachable uh, uh, skids and struts for the uh, for the uh, the propellers, so you can protect yourself. This thing is crazy, crazy durable. And let me show you how it works. There we go. Let's go ahead and go to the, the handheld camera. Now, there we go. Okay, so. This control is just like the other one. I will say because it's a little bit heavier, it's a bit more sluggish. Even, even though it has a whole lot more power than its predecessor, the fact that I've added on all that extra stuff from the camera to the landing gear to the, the prop protectors means that it's not going to fly nearly as fast. However, if you're into video, that's actually a good thing. They've much improved the camera on this because the platform is more stable. So if I activate the video recording or the camera or the, uh, the individual shots, I will get much better photos, much better content coming out of that camera, which again is stored on a micro SD card. It comes with a four gigabyte card. You could up that to eight gigabyte if that's what you really want. Now, I will say this. For people who are looking for crazy speed, you can do this. If you take off the landing struts, if you take off the camera, which uh, I have to push that tab right there, 
And if you take off the prop protectors, first you get a machine that is much more dangerous, but you also get a machine that has a much higher thrust to weight ratio. This thing actually becomes hard to control. We've been flying this in the, in the old Pixel Core studio and uh, this, this will go quite crazy. Go ahead, follow this, Greg. Wait, come on, do your job. Greg, what are you doing? Come on, Greg, what's wrong? Follow it, follow it, come on. So yeah, if you, if you do wanna do fun flights, strip off all the stuff and you will get a quad that's actually a lot more fun to fly than, uh, than just filming. Now, here's, here's the con side. This is gonna go for $90. You can probably find it on sale with a rebate for about 60. At 60, this is a buy. At 90, it's a don't buy. All right, let's get away from the big ones because there's gonna be people who can only fly indoors and even this might be a bit much because there is a lot of power, especially if you strip off all their gear. For that, we have these. Actually, let's, let's get all that other stuff so you don't confuse the debris of the other craft with, with these. These are actually complete quad, look at these quadcopters. These quadcopters are smaller than the camera that goes on that Swan uh, qua Video Force drone. Yes, these are full drones. No, I, I'm, I'm not making this up. Actually, this remote goes with that. That goes from. In fact, this drone actually fits inside its controller. Now, both of these are charged off of a USB cable. They'll charge in about 40 minutes. You'll get five to six minutes of flight. Um, I was really against these. I did not like them. I did not think that they would be fun. Uh, I was very, very wrong. There is a lot of fun to be found in a small drone. Now, let's take a look at this one first. This is the Arius. They're calling it the smallest in the world, and I actually do agree, them, agree with them. It's 30 millimeters by 22 millimeters. Oh, and by the way, none of the drones that we've shown so far, or will show, require FAA registration. You just don't need it. It's, 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 uh, they're light enough that they, they slip right under the radar. So when you turn this on, you gotta bind the remote. There we go. And uh, this is how it flies. Greg, I, I don't know how you're gonna follow this, but all right, let's... They actually fly really, really well. I was not expecting, I'm gonna fly it right in front of you. <laughs> Objects may be closer than they appear, Greg. They're, I mean, this is actually a really stable platform. It will do flips, I'm not gonna do it right now. Uh, I will say one of the issues with this is um, the props do fall off a lot. So you may need to use a little stick em, uh, but it's incredibly durable. We dropped this thing from about 20 feet up, hit the ground with a thud, put the props back on and it was ready to go. And it actually does have a lot, of, because it is so small, even though it's got tiny little motors, you can get a lot of boost out of them. Ooh, 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 ooh. Now this is gonna go for, what was the price on these, uh, Karsten? $35. These are $35 each. And the nice thing about this is if you get this for your kids, uh, they're not gonna be able to destroy anything. They can annoy the dog, they can annoy the cat, but uh, they won't be able to hurt themselves or anybody else. Now let's take a step up. We go from the Arius to the Axis Turbo. This is a $38 drone. It's the former smallest in the world. Before they came up with that one, we had this one. Again, it charges off of USB. We'll charge in about 40 minutes. We'll give you between five and seven minutes of flight time. Uh, it's got three speed settings. We're only gonna use the lowest one. Uh, and this one actually does have a flip. It's, it's much like the SEMA quadcopters that we like in that you can do an automated flip. So if you wanna show off to your friends, uh, now it's bound, Greg, we're gonna follow this. I actually prefer to fly this one just because of its size. It means that it's a little easier to control. It's a little easier to get the right throttle setting. I'm coming for you, Greg. What, what, come on, what do you, what, what do you got, what do you got, what do you got? I should get Tony out here. He can show you how you flip these things. Uh, they are kind of small, so they're hard to track, but at the same time, because they are so small, it means that you can fly them in places where you wouldn't otherwise fly. Hey, Tony, you wanna fly? Here, you take over while I, I talk about this. So Tony's gonna give you a quick demonstration of, of all the fun that you can have with this. I've got the back pointed toward you, so uh, there you go. Tony's been practicing with this, this size of drone much more than I have. He's, he's showing off the, uh, yeah, back off so he can show you the flip. So that's a, it's a pre-programmed flip. Whoa! <laughs> oh! Folks, one of the things you don't wanna do with this is you don't wanna flip it into the floor. But as you can see, very durable. Pick it right up, back up, put it back on its feet, and, you're, oh, and crash into some Apple boxes under the TNT desk. Again, this is the Axis Turbo X, $38. If you're looking for a smaller drone that can't do any damage, uh, you know what? Even though I didn't like them at first, I gotta say both of these 
are a buy. Well, folks, that does it, not just for this episode, but for this series of Before You Buy. This is the last episode that we will have for standalone reviews. From now on in the Twit TV network, these reviews are going to be split up into the shows in which they belong. You're going to see things like the Pixel C on This Week in Google. You're going to see things like the review for the Pencil and the iPad Pro on Mac Break Weekly. And you're going to find reviews for drones like this on Know How or the new screensavers. I, I do want to say that uh, it's been an absolute pleasure to bring you all the best, all the coolest, all the latest and greatest in gadgets over the years. Before You Buy is one of the shows that I grew up with here on the Twit TV network. And so even though it is sad to see it go, it is very, very happy news to know that we're going to continue to bring you the best reviews that we possibly can. Thanks to all of our reviewers ever. Of course, Leo Laporte. Of course, Megan Maroney and Mike Elgin and Jason Howell and Brian Burnett and Greg Burnett and Snubs, Miriam Jouar, pretty much everyone who participated from staff members like Carly to people like Patrick Delahanty who uh, give us an odd view of technology every once in a while. It's been our absolute pleasure, privilege and honor to walk with you with your techno lust. Until next time, actually, until the next time we show you our view on another show on the Twit Net TV network. I'm Father Robert Balancer, the digital Jesuit, just reminding you that you should have watched before you buy. <laughs>